Hello and welcome to another 3ABN Today program. I'm Jason Bradley and today we are going to talk about Lineage Journey. What is Lineage Journey? Well, stay tuned, you're gonna find out. My guest today, uh, we have Adam Ramden. He's with the uh, North England Conference and he's the Youth Director. And then we have Clive Coutte, who is the Media Director of Weimar Institute. It's a pleasure to have you guys here. Good, good. I've seen uh, Lineage Journey and the quality is so amazing. I wanna, I wanna find out a little bit about your backgrounds and um, you know what it took to get this project to come together how long it took we're gonna get into all that Adam I want to find out a little bit about your background were you raised Adventist mm -hmm. um, so you were raised Adventist. I was raised Adventist mm -hmm. uh, my, both my parents were Adventist though neither of them came from Adventist home oh. so I was born and raised in England mm -hmm. grew up um, over there so raised in the church, um, wasn't baptized till I was 19 though. Mm -hmm. And then I went to do some studies and got into ministry um, in my 20s. Okay, and what about you, Clive? Um, pr pretty similar experience with my parents anyway. Um, my mom wasn't raised Adventist, my dad was. Um, and then I was raised Adventist, but kind of as a young person growing up in church, you kind of get lost and um, I kind of left in mentally anyway. Mm -hmm. And it was really through some life-changing experiences in my um, late teens and early 20s that really changed my life around and I, I found Christ again. Amen. Adam, you're no stranger to 3ABN. Uh, I've been here a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what what uh, growth uh, have you seen since you've been here? Growth with the... With lineage. Oh, okay, yeah, we came uh, about a year and a half ago. We mm -hmm. were filming, we were releasing what we call season one and we're filming, in the process of filming season two. Okay. So since then we've uh, obviously finished season one, we took a six month break and then we started releasing season two. We're actually almost completed releasing season two. So in that time since we last came, it's, it's grown a lot in terms of the countries that it's been viewed in and mm -hmm. obviously the number of people who've been watching it and where it's been watched. So it's, it's been quite remarkable to see that growth. It was never something we, mm -hmm. we knew would or expected would happen or thought would happen. We just thought, you know, a few people here and there might watch it. If you had to throw out a number, how many people would you say have, have been reached? Um, just just shy of three million. Wow. Um, three million. That, well, that's taken into account Facebook views. Yes. Um, YouTube views, Vimeo views, web, and website and so mm -hmm. on. Um, but the real number, we don't really know. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. we don't know. I mean, that's the digital number you get. But a lot of the testimonies we get back in mm -hmm. is that people who are watching it are watching it in schools, mm -hmm. like classrooms, mm -hmm. or they're watching it in Sabbath schools, or they're watching it. A lot of churches show it at the end of Sabbath school or divine service. Um, so, you know, it may be one view, but 200 people watch it. So nice. we don't really know exactly. Nice. You know. So you said the churches are showing it and Sabbath schools and all that stuff, and schools are showing it. What kind of, uh, how, do, how do they use that? Like, is it, can they do seminars with it? I mean, how's that work? Well, I know, for, for example, my home church, um, they kind of do it as a, a youth program, mm -hmm. and they have the youth um, watch the episode, and then they have a discussion about it. We know other churches who kind of use it and play it in between Sabbath school and divine service as like a filler, mm -hmm. um, especially the, uh, the 500 year anniversary of the Reformation in 2017. You know, all the churches were talking about Reformation and what was happening in the Reformation. Mm -hmm. So it was really good for especially church members mm -hmm. to kind of learn history, learn the background of, you know, the origins and roots of mm -hmm. Protestantism. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's being used in multiple ways, whether young, old, um, everyone's kind of taking the information and learning just tons of information. Praise the Lord. Now, how did you come up with the name? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the idea was Clive's idea. He, okay. he originally approached me and on the steps of the British Museum and said, hey, do you want to film some videos on, on, on on Reformation history here in England. We've got the British Museum, we've got John Wesley's home and so on. Um, and then we thought, well, let's go to Oxford and Cambridge and Lutterworth where John Wycliffe was from. And then we thought Scotland. So we kind of built this idea, but we were still, and then the idea was to have a, a series that would go weekly, mm -hmm. so one episode a week throughout the year. Okay. So that was the idea, weekly episodes. And then we, thinking of a name, we brainstormed a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, actually, a. Uh, so we're thinking of all these ideas, and some of them now I look back, I'm 
so glad we didn't pick them. <laughs> um, lineage kind of has a ring to it, it's just one word and whatnot. But the idea kind of behind the name was that the, the episodes were chronological. Mm. So we mm -hmm. started with Constantine, and we went all the way up to say the end of the 1700s, and we, each episode was chronological. So the idea behind lineage was we're tracing the, the story okay. of our heritage, of our history through mm. time. Mm -hmm. So then lineage journey, you know, the journey of our lineage nice. and how we can trace that through time. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so have you always been into history? Personally, I have, yeah. Yeah? I what about you, Clive? I wouldn't say I was, especially <laughs> in school. I definitely wasn't. But as I became an Adventist and uh -huh. really found the Lord again, especially after re reading The Great Controversy, that's when my mind really just got unlocked. Mm -hmm. And when I started to visualize, I'm a creative, mm -hmm. so I started to visualize a lot of these stuff, you know, went onto YouTube, tried to find, you know, good representations, good videos, and I just couldn't find that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I guess... I, I, to answer your question, no, I haven't always been in history, but as an Adventist, yes, I have been in yes. history. <laughs> and, and why do you guys think it's so important to be aware of your history? I think, for me, history and identity are so tied together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the, a lot of people today want, want to know where they come from as, you know, ethnicity, or they want to know yep. what their family heritage is, or, mm -hmm. you know, let me trace my family tree and all that kind of stuff. So we have an interest on a personal level, mm -hmm. but I think spiritually, increasingly as, as Christians or as Adventists, the younger generation is not always aware like, of what happened 50 years ago, 100 years ago. But it's interesting to know those, I believe, those stories because it plays a part into shaping who we are today. And so knowing your past helps you to understand why you're here in the present, really. And also helps you to understand the future. Yes, yes, because they say history has a uh, tendency or a way of repeating itself. It often does, unfortunately. You know, so <laughs> yeah. You can try and learn the lessons from the mm -hmm. past, then, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how many, I know you said that you want to show like an episode a week. So how many episodes are in a season? Uh, initially, oh, season one was going to be, you know, the full 52 weeks, but it didn't quite work out. So it was only 48. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> 48 is enough. <laughs> yeah. This but guy then, will tell you it was a lot. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot of work. But uh -huh. then season two, we kind of made up for that and we did 52. Okay. Um, so in total, for season one and two, we have 100 episodes. Wow. Plus loads of, you know, behind the scenes videos. We also have um, season one. Um, a lot of the videos have 360 video as well. Okay. So young people can kind of s explore the locations to where these things took place in 360 wow. degree video. Um, so yeah, we have quite a lot of episodes and I would say there's probably about 60 360 videos. Um, and maybe about 10 behind the scenes videos. So we're looking at about 170, something like that, yeah. Wow, and what's your creative process when you're thinking about you know, creating uh, these episodes? What, what's your process? What are you thinking about while you're developing this? Um, I mean, for me, I'm really thinking about how is this history, which often enough to the average person may be boring, mm -hmm. how can we make that boring history relevant to someone in their life, mm -hmm. you know? But then also the message has to be relevant, which is why there's an evangelistic appeal at the end of every single episode, but also nice. visually, how is it gonna be appealing? Mm -hmm. You know, often enough stuff can be very low quality or, you know, it may not be to a very high standard, but, you know, young people wanna see good quality stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things that we were thinking about is on social media, for example, on YouTube or on Instagram, you have probably up to three seconds to reach someone before they just scroll past Yes. So that's why, you know, at the, at the beginning of every single lineage episode, there's really fast paced um, imagery mm -hmm. within the first three seconds. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, you know, really fast paced clips to kind of grab someone's attention so that it would draw them in to want to watch the rest of the three to five minute video. Nice. Um, so, yeah, really important in terms of the creative process is, is the message, obviously. Mm -hmm. but also, how is that going to how is that message going to be portrayed visually? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's a science behind it. Yes, definitely. Yeah, we've, we've also tried to make as much of the, the filming on location. So rather than, you know, a green screen or something, mm -hmm. and, and there's no problem when, you know, some people have to use that, but we, we've tried as much as possible that if I'm talking about John Wycliffe, I'm standing by his church or yeah. talking, and I think that gives it an added, yeah. um, I don't know, realness or like, authenticity. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm talking about John Huss, and I'm standing where he died, or we're talking about William Miller, and we're in his house, so mm -hmm. it gives that connection. It's not just, um, so it shows that, you know, we've, we, we went to the places and, and the filming was on location. I, th yeah. I, th I think with like this millennial generation that we have, mm -hmm. um, it's not enough just to read it in books. 
yes. sometimes. And some people don't even read books, you mm -hmm. know. But it's not enough. People want to kind of see mm -hmm. what you're talking about. So that's why, you know, being on location helps people to explore those places. This is where, you know, Martin Luther stood up. This is where, you know, John Wycliffe, yeah. you know, you know I'm, this process, this, this is the physical location where these things took place. It really brings it to life. Exactly. So, okay, so when you're recording these episodes and, you know, from start to finish, give us an idea of, let's say, um, your, not the creative process, we, we talked about that, but from start to finish, how long does it take? To film or to, or to edit? To, to film from start to finish, filming, <laughs> editing, planning, um, the whole, the whole <laughs> nine. I mean, the, the filming. If we, if all the filming, say, is in one area where we could walk to all the different, where we do all the different shots, roughly four, four hours, roughly. Mm -hmm. By the time you do the drone shots, the B-roll, the dialogue, and memorizing it and and, and whatnot, so probably about four hours. Um, four hours of recording, really? Maybe yeah. three, maybe yeah. three. It uh, also depends on, you know, a it lot. All depends. A lot of the time. The, the, phys the, the locations are in different places, so sometimes yeah. we have to travel in between that. But if we were to just do it from start to finish, probably mm -hmm. filming-wise, four hours. Maybe typically, less, maybe less. typically, in terms of trying to save money, we've had to do things really quickly. Okay. So we're kind of in and we're out and onto the next location. He's always like, oh, I've got 6% of battery left. You've got to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to get it, you do it in one take, you know? Yeah, yeah, no pressure. Right. No uh, pressure. <laughs> but in terms of the editing process, um, season one typically typically per episode took uh -huh. two to three days. Wow. Season two has taken sorry about one to two days. Um, that's because you know we've been able to refine the process and review. After season one, I was able to review things and see how, what's a better way of doing it. Yeah. So we've been able to cut down the time a little bit, um, but it is it's still very time consuming. So you're, you're talking about you know at least three or four days per episode, and that's not including the script writing and the logistics and the planning and all that kind of stuff. Three to four days, oh, per episode. Per episode okay, yeah. so isn't that two to three days for all 50 something? No, 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 no. <laughs> Whew, okay, I was about to say that is incredibly <laughs> fast. <laughs> now, if, if, if we knew all the work before we started the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. and, and some of the, so like you film a lot on location, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So you have to climb mountains and stuff or like to get some of these shots had, or? yeah i mean some of the the first season was a lot in europe so a lot of it was mm -hmm. in the capitals the cathedrals and places like that um and there were some places we climbed the mountain the waldensian episode we we climbed that mountain to film at sunrise and so we had to leave at like i don't know four o'clock in the morning or five to, to climb up wow. and we got there um, at least Clive got there and got the sunrise. Uh -huh. um, I was a little bit f behind him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, season two was Adventist history, and that was a completely different, um, uh, for the most part, completely different, because instead of going to like big, austere cathedrals and you know, seeing Reformation statues and monuments, we were traveling like New England and New York, just tiny little farms and little villages. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was an interesting contrast to see the contrast between, say, the Reformation origins and then seeing the origins of Adventism, which was very humble and very, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the average view, insignificant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yet to see where our history has come from, from really humble beginnings to where we are today is, is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think season one was also challenging at times because we were, we were filming and editing at the same time. Wow. You know, so um, like Adam just mentioned, there's one morning where we, we climbed up Mount Castelluzzo to go film an episode in the Waldensi Valley. And the night before, um, we had an episode coming out that very morning. Um, I was editing till 3 a.m. to then wake up at 5 to climb a mountain, you know. And the, the process was, was, because we were very new to this, it kind of grew organically mm -hmm. and, and so fast, you know. There wasn't much time to, to kind of refine things, but we managed to do that for season two. Um, but I mean, even just making stuff visually interesting for season two. Season one, like Adam said, monuments and that kind of stuff. But we, got, we have an episode on season one on the potato patch preachers. You know, how do you make a potato farm field look uh, interesting? Uh -huh. These were some of the challenges that we had to, to get through. And, Man, how um, did you make, how did well, you do that? Watch the episode, <laughs> watch the episode and you'll find out. <laughs> yeah. And we actually have some video uh, that yeah. we are going to show. Uh, tell us a little bit about the first one that we're gonna take a look at. Probably the easiest one to make visually interesting was the, the one on Adventist education. Because mm -hmm. we, so we, we're talking about the history of Adventism, 
But then key to Adventist, uh, you know, our church, Seventh-day Adventist church is a focus on education. Mm -hmm. So we, we did an episode on how Adventist education started, where the vision came from, the focus on education and holistic education, that it wasn't just kind of academic achievement, but it was the education of the whole person and mm -hmm. it was mission minded, mm -hmm. it was Bible based, etc. And when we, when we released that episode, we actually put out on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, if you've got video clips of your Adventist schools, please send them in to us. Mm -hmm. And we had a, an amazing support around the world of people sending us clips from Korea and wow. different parts of Africa and South America and Europe. And so that episode, we were able to get video clips kind of worldwide, showing worldwide Adventism education today. And people really connected with that when they saw their school or their alma mater, you know, on on that, and so that was a, um, a real, real blessing. That episode. So, oh, well, well, we might as well show it right now. Let's let's check out the birth of Adventist education. The Adventist church was in its infancy with a membership that was only in the tens of thousands and yet it had already made ventures into the publishing work and the health work. Despite a small membership, it would soon move into the educational field as well with a vision far greater than the reality of church life at the time. A school had started in 1868 by Goodloe Harper Bell that was supported locally here in Battle Creek. But in 1872, James and Ellen White would call for the upgrading of this school into an advanced educational institution and also for the denomination to support the school. As guidance for the school, Ellen White wrote Testimony for the Church, number 22, where she developed the fundamental principle of the correlation between the physical, mental, moral, and religious aspects of education. The Bible was not to be just an elective option to study, but was to be infused throughout the whole curriculum, eliminating the classics as the main thrust. Initially, the teachers and administrators struggled to implement what they probably didn't fully understand themselves. As well as making the curriculum Bible-based, there was also the admonition to include a manual labor program. Education was to move away from the Latin and Greek classics and be holistic focusing on character development and daily reminding the students of their obligation to God to live for Him and be a missionary wherever they were. The focus on manual labor and missionary work is reflected in the early names of these schools. The College of Medical Evangelists, Emmanuel Missionary College, Southern Missionary College, Australasian Missionary College, and Oakwood Industrial School. The purpose was for mission. The name of the school reflected the purpose of the church to train missionaries at home and abroad. The vision to start a comprehensive educational system would mushroom and grow. Education is such a key evangelistic strategy. The places today where the church is stronger have a strong Adventist educational system that is valued and supported by the members. Education that recognizes it's not just for academic advancement, but that is also evangelistic and redemptive, echoing the words of Ellen White that education and redemption are one. The work of education now encompasses the globe with the largest Protestant school system, but our strength lies not in our size, but in our faithfulness to the original purpose of setting up the educational school system. Practical education with a clear mission focus was the primary motivating factor rather than just academic excellence. Many today do not have the opportunity of an Adventist education. If that is you, then may you be a witness in your school or university like the Waldensians in years gone by. 
Proverbs says, train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Whether it's at Sabbath school, homeschool, or Adventist school, we see that education is vitally important in solidifying what we believe, as well as giving us the skills that we need in life. If you live near a school, then support it. Support the youth who are attending, whether it's financially, through your prayers, by volunteering, by working, or in whatever way that you can. that made history come alive. What countries have you been to uh, to record? Uh, about, I was counting the other day, I think it was about 11, 12. Um, so France, Italy, Switzerland, Czech Republic. Germany. Germany, England. Denmark, Sweden, England, Scotland. Uh, Wales. Wales. <laughs> uh, then Australia, New Zealand, the United States of America. And I think that's, that's it. it. That's it, yeah. So far. Wow. So far. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's quite a bit right there. Yeah. Has anything out of the ordinary happened in any of these countries? Uh, hmm. I mean, we've had numerous testimonies um, mm -hmm. that have come through. Um, I say one of the testimonies that we, we heard recently um, is actually from, from where we're from, from England, was a young guy who um, maybe he was about nine, I think, or ten, and he was in school, and he actually oh. went to a... He actually went to a Catholic school and um, he actually knew Adam because Adam preaches a lot in England and um, his teacher is actually an atheist mm -hmm. and they were doing some history lessons on some of the work that took place in England and they ended up playing one of the lineage episodes in a Catholic school by an atheist teacher. Um, and he, he shared a little testimony. He ended up telling his teacher that, you know, he knew Adam and was there anything else? Yeah, the teacher was looking for... Uh was online searching for videos that would illustrate his point of, of noble characters from history. Mm, then he bumped mm -hmm. across a lineage episode and showed it in, in class, and the, you know, the, wow. the student there in England was, you know, really excited to tell his teacher that, hey, you know, that, that's some, well, I know the person, and, but also that's, that's something. So that was interesting to see that it's not just being used maybe within uh, the circle that we would assume, but, mm -hmm. you know, in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a public school as well. So that was pretty... But in Exciting. terms of like experiences, you know, we shot, we shot an episode in, in New Zealand last year and um, there's a, a, a guy that's mentioned called um, Eric Hare and he's a prominent figure in the history of what took place in New Zealand. And we ended up driving to this town called Keo um, and in the town, um, there's like a little museum. We went to the museum and we, we, we were talking to this lady and we were asking her about the information about Eric Hare, mm -hmm. if there was any pictures or anything like that. And she, she was kind of intrigued, like, why are we interested in this person? We've come all the way from England. Uh -huh. This town is like, is smaller than Thompsonville. Yeah. It's, it's like... It's really small. Tiny, tiny, really? tiny. tiny yeah. you, you, probably like two, three hundred meters long, just a few houses. And yet it's interesting because the Adventist Church, the Jehovah's Witness and the Catholic Church in New Zealand all started in this little town. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they, they, the locals kind of know their history, they know their heritage, uh -huh. that this uh -huh. is there. So when we came up, they're asking about the Adventist history, like Joseph Hare or Eric B. Hare. Um, her ears perked up. And, and you know, we, we, we discovered that she was actually a descendant of him. Really? Um, so she was a family, a, a long a relative. I, I can't remember if it was great, great granddaughter or, you know, second yeah. cousin or something like that. But she was a relative of this man. So she was super intrigued about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. She's very helpful, very helpful, sent us all this information. We went back to England and, you know, um, she sent us more photos. And every every now and then I've emailed her saying, you know, do you have this or do you have that? And she's taken pictures and photocopied and she's not an Adventist herself, wow. you know. Um, yes. it, it, it was just a blessing to see how we're on the other side of the world mm -hmm. and um, we, we managed to meet a descendant of, you know, Joseph Hare. Joseph Hare, who was prominent in starting up the work within New Zealand. And um, she was just so helpful and really grateful mm. that we were doing a video on her family history, really. <laughs> wow. yeah, so jo Joseph was the first Adventist in New Zealand. Okay. Then his son was Robert Hare, who became a famous evangelist. Uh -huh. He studied at Pacific Union College, went back there. He had a son called Eric B. Hare. 
Okay. He was famous in Adventism for being a story writer, famous missionary. He was in Burma. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people know Eric Behe. Mm -hmm. And then so when we, I think this lady would probably be like a second or third cousin down from him. Okay. Um, her grand, great grandfather, who would have been Robert Hare's brother, ended up going back to the Methodist church and didn't stay an Adventist. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it was very, very unique and very interesting mm -hmm. to yeah, that sounds like a have very a connection unique. that far on either side of the world and mm -hmm. have someone so mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah, but even even that, you know, we've had great experiences. There's always people in different countries that have been really willing to help us. And you know, we we went to France and filmed some episodes there. And we had the youth director in in France who was really interested in what we were doing and helping us go places. And it's just been. Everywhere we've been, doors have just opened and God has really just led us. Praise the Lord. What about Muslim countries? Oh, that's a good question. Um, recently, we've been having a lot of views, at least on Facebook, in Muslim countries. So Afghanistan, Libya, Iran. Wow. And just, just some of them that come off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, know, I don't know how or why, um, but there's something happening over there. And so it's interesting to look at the views, of, you know, America, yeah, yeah Philippines, yeah. England, Australia. But then to see these countries pop up as well, mm -hmm. it shows that there's, there's a great hunger in, in all parts of the world for. Yeah. And in interestingly enough, there's, there's been a guy who runs a ministry over in one of those countries. I'm not sure where, um, but he takes Adventist content and he translates it and then he posts it on his channel in the Arabic language. And he's wow. been taking our videos and reposting them. Um, so I'm guessing that may have been one of the avenues in. Um, but it's just showing that, you know, these episodes, they're kind of being um, picked up by different, um, different races, different religions all mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of taking it and translating it and getting it into places that we can't even imagine. Yeah. You know, I've, heard, I've heard of these videos, um, you know, YouTube is banned in places like China, for example. Mm -hmm. But I've heard mm -hmm. of um, people who have downloaded them, sent them on WhatsApp or sent them through mobile, you know, mobile media platforms. Wow. And, you know, sharing these and it's funny, it's funny when someone sends me a video yeah. of, of what I've done, yeah. but they didn't know that I did it. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's funny how it just goes full circle, but yeah. it shows that you know, the Lord is opening up opportunities for, for digital media to get out into the masses. Yes, yeah, digital evangelism. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what are some of the responses? Well, first, before we go into some of the responses, um, how many translations are there? Up to 18. And that's subtitles. Said up to, up to, up to 18. And I say up to because not every language has done every episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But up to 18, um, you can find some of, the, some of the episodes would be up to 18. Some of them would be less. Depends. We don't translate ourselves. So you know, we're kind of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess you say crowdsourced or people submit the translations. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of how we go with it. Um, now, in terms of dubbing, up to, is it three or four? Three, I think. Up yeah. to three. Okay. One, one language, Polish, did the whole of season one, fully mm -hmm. dubbed in Polish. Italian, most of it, and Slovenian or one of those languages as well. And so there's quite a bit on that. That takes a little bit more time and effort for people to do, but there's, wow. a, there's a fair amount out there. We have them all on our channel, but they have them on theirs as well. That's amazing. And people are volunteer, yeah, voluntarily are volunteer, doing yeah. this. That's volunteers. Yeah. People contest, hey, can we translate? We're like, sure. You know, mm -hmm. Just make sure you give it to us after you've done, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's amazing. What are some of the responses that you've received uh, once people watch Lineage? Um, one of the interesting ones we had was, like I said, it's used in schools and some people mm -hmm. use it. There was, there was a young school girl in, in Georgia who we saw a little video on Facebook and then we contacted her and she made a video and kind of gave it to us after that. But she used, she was, I forget her age, so it's around 10. She's okay. around 10. I forget exactly how old she is. Um, maybe a few years older. I'm not sure. But she was doing a worship for her class mm -hmm. and she had to do a worship and she was doing it on Martin William Miller. Okay. And then she has watched Lineage Journey at home with her family. They watch it regularly. And so she used the video as part of her doing her worship for the school. So that was really encouraging to see that someone of a, a young age was taking this resource, was speaking publicly, was using it as, yes. as part of her, you know, her, her resources that she was using to share. And that, that was really interesting to and encouraging to see nice. someone sharing. And another story that just came to mind was um, last year I went camping mm -hmm. um, in Wales mm -hmm. and um, I met a guy and I'm, I was speaking to him and he was asking me what I do and I was explaining about Linear, just like, oh, you know, I've, I've watched Lineage, I've watched it a, long, uh, a few times. And he went on to say that um, he's studying history, I think it was religious history. Mm -hmm. And um, he said for his exam, 
he would um, watch the lineage episodes, study the content out, and when he actually took his exam, he, um, he would get, the question would be asked, and the, the episode would come to his memory, and the point of what Adam was saying would come to his memory, and wow. he passed his test. So he basically used it as a way to study for an wow. exam. Wow, I needed you guys when I was in, <laughs> in school. <laughs> That's why I've got to make sure it's historically accurate. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, That's you know, right. th these are just some of the ways. I mean, there's plenty more that we could, we could come to, but I think we'd be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. We had a few teachers contact us and, you know, just share how they mm -hmm. use it. We've had academy deans. I know the dean at, um, I believe, Georgia Cumberland Academy. She's the, the, the dean of ladies. She okay. uses it in the dorm worship. So, um, Actually, another one that just come to mind, which would be really good to share, is um, there was a, a, a teacher who was teaching a kindergarten, I think it was, yeah. and um, they were watching some of these lineage episodes, and she sent us a video of her class who had taken the episode that we did on Jerome and Huss, mm -hmm. and they'd watched the episode, and then they actually recreated the episode using Lego. So they'd done John wow. Huss, you know, burning at the stake, and they'd done him in prison, and, you know, all of these different points that we'd covered in the episode. The kids had actually made these, I guess, monuments or structures mm -hmm. using Lego, and she sent us a video of all of it, and it's pretty amazing to see that young kids are taking this and being able to understand it, and then, you know, obviously mm. yeah. create wonderful masterpieces out of Lego. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing, and I mean, they're really taking in the history because, you know, at that young age, like, their minds are like sponges. Exactly. They're just, they're so impressionable, and they just absorb everything that they're learning, mm. so I mean, we didn't awesome. create the videos per se for younger children. That wasn't our target audience, uh -huh. but as we travel around, we find that a lot of the younger kids especially really really connect and enjoy it yeah um i guess the short time is you know mm -hmm. uh, appeals as well that it's not like you know sit down and watch a 60 minute video or, or 20 it's just short and yeah yeah i'd like to transition a little bit into new zealand let's talk about new zealand oh well we kind of mentioned earlier that the, 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 the filming the episode down mm -hmm. there it's fascinating to see the how the church started in new zealand and as i said as we were filming down there we met that lady who was integral to the Adventist history there. And, and, yeah, and, it was, and that, it's fascinating to see how the church started, yeah. Well, we actually have uh, a clip yeah. from mm -hmm. that episode. Let's take a look at that. Funds had been raised by Sabbath school members in California to send a missionary team down to Australia. The intention was to open the work in Australia, but God had additional plans in store. Headed by SN Haskell, the team stopped here in New Zealand for four to five days en route in 1885. Impressed by the friendliness of the people and noting the libraries in town, Haskell commented that the people must be interested in learning and would therefore make good prospects for learning Bible truths. After settling in Melbourne, he decided to return to America and stopped off in New Zealand on the way. He had heard of a group of Sunday-keeping Adventists and found accommodation with Edward and Lizzie Hare. They introduced him to others in the area and he held some meetings over the course of a few weeks. Breaking the evangelistic rule, he presented the Sabbath on the first night and the second coming on the second night. They were convinced and encouraged him to visit the rest of the Hare family who lived north in Cairo. Deciding not to return to the US, he stayed with the Hare family in Cayo, about 250 kilometers north of Auckland. This area is rich in religious history, with the Methodist, Anglican, Catholic, and Seventh-day Adventist churches having roots in the area. Here he met the patriarch of the family, Joseph Hare, an Irish orangeman, who along with his family, lived in a house on the mound behind me. He also met his son, Robert, and both of them were preachers. Haskell was invited to speak and spoke for three consecutive Sundays, along with evening meetings and also holding Bible studies during the day in the home. The Hare family decided to keep the Sabbath, and this chemist behind me would end up being one of the first church buildings that they met in. Robert, the son, had a difficult decision to make. 
He was engaged to be married. The house had been built, the furniture had been ordered, but his bride-to-be objected to his new beliefs. It was marriage or the Sabbath. She wouldn't convert and he wouldn't compromise. The marriage was off and he left for America to study for the ministry at Healdsburg College. Haskell returned in 1886 and ran a two-week evangelistic series. And before he left, he organized the KO Seventh-day Adventist Church, the first in New Zealand on the 23rd of March, 1886. Haskell sent a good report to the General Conference and requested an evangelist be sent. The choice was 28-year-old A.G. Daniels, who would later go on to be the longest-serving General Conference president. A.G. Daniels brought with him a 15-square-meter marquee that was pitched here in this park, along with a pedal organ, and together with his wife, lived in a tent on site. A.G. Daniels would lead the first evangelistic tent series in Auckland and drew large crowds. And at the end of 17 weeks of meetings, a Sabbath school with 78 members was started. Later on, a small wooden church was built on McKelvey Street with 67 charter members. And the first service took place on the 15th of October, 1887. This was the first church built in the Southern Hemisphere and still stands today as part of the Ponsonby Seventh-day Adventist Church. Robert Hare would soon return from the USA with his American bride, Henrietta Johnson, and thrust himself into the work here. A few years later, a conference would be formed and the work would progress to the South Island with S.N. Haskell, amongst others, starting the church there as well. A few years later, the conference would split into two in 1915. A college was also started at Longburn on the south part of the North Island. When Ellen White was in the South Pacific, she spent some time here helping to establish the church and spoke at the first New Zealand camp meeting and also began writing on the life of Christ while she was down here. And so the stop on the journey to Australia turned into a lot more than just a few days rest. God had bigger plans than just rest and relaxation. S.N. Haskell's return journey to America never materialized then, and instead the church was birthed here in this beautiful country. Sometimes we have big plans that we want God to accomplish, and whilst that's good to have, we must always be open to God turning things around and remember, as Isaiah says, that his ways are higher than our ways. Tell you what, you guys have been teaching me all kinds of new things today. <laughs> <laughs> now, as I look at that production and and I'm looking at the quality of it, it seems like we've we've got you two sitting here, but how many people are on your team? Because it seems like there would be There's a lot a, of people involved yeah, with this. It's more than just us. Mm -hmm. Clive's the main camera guy, but we also have uh, another two that would work with with the cameras and the filming. Okay. Um, we have a photographer. We have a someone who writes all the content for our website and our blogs and our articles mm -hmm. and also does fact checking on the on the scripts that are written we then have a a wife my, my wife his wife they kind of assist in the producing for season two my wife did the sound um audio sound for that she kind of learned that and did that who wow. else a website someone yeah. who does the website so Honestly. there's a team of around about 10 of us wow um, that if we're all there that would be 10 but mm -hmm. you know sometime it would just be me and him, but ideally there's like six or seven of us mm -hmm. who are filming on location. So it varies where we go, mm -hmm. about 10. Okay. And so different people have different skills and talents. Yeah. Some of them are just for the visual, and then others are for the, the back end or for the, you know, the supporting um, resources that we make as well. And what resources do you have? We, at the minute we've got the website, which is very um, involved. There's a lot of articles there. But we're in the process and almost ready to produce a series of study guides 
that would go alongside all of the episodes of season one and oh. season two. Mm -hmm. So the idea would be that someone could watch the video and have a small group Bible study or a yeah. Sabbath school class or a youth group or something like that, mm -hmm. and then watch the video and then you've got a study guide to enable you to have discussion mm -hmm. um, that's clearly taking you to a, a point. So you're not just saying, hey, what do you think, guys? But these are different questions we've put together. There's some Bible text, there's some biblical illustrations that match with it, we think, mm -hmm. and it would help the, the Bible study or the small group leader or the pastor or the Sabbath school leader to be able to have a constructive discussion. That is nice. So we've about to release that for season one and two. Okay, and you guys also have t-shirts and all yeah. that stuff too, right? We got, yeah, because the, the guy who's our photographer works as an illustrator, uh -huh. works for Apple actually as an illustrator. So he's got some really kind of unique um, designs for t-shirts, mm -hmm. Martin Luther and, and um, John Knox, Wesley. William Tyndale and John Wesley. Yeah. So we've got t-shirts that people can buy if they want to, you know, support lineage or Mm -hmm. Wear mm -hmm. it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what can we expect in season two? Well, season two is out, and that's Adventist history, but the dream or the plan is to have season three. Mm -hmm. And so really what we've covered so far, you could summarize and say it's a, it's a history of great controversy. the book Great Controversy, because gotcha. we start with Constantine, and, and then we go all the way up through Adventist history. So mm -hmm. it's really covering the time period that the book Great Controversy covers. Our idea now is to go back in time. Okay and to go back to Genesis or Patriarchs and Prophets okay. and have smaller series. We're looking at maybe 10 to 15 episodes on the book Patriarchs and Prophets. Okay. So covering that time period, then Prophets and Kings, then probably a few more episodes on, on Desire of Ages just because we have more locations that we could film at. Mm -hmm. And then Acts of the Apostles is the journeys of Paul. So the idea is to season three would probably be broken down into four segments. Mm -hmm. And then together with what we've got, it would provide people with a big narrative of the great controversy theme. Nice. Um, through scripture and through history. So that's the plan to kind of go back to complete the, the package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to involve filming in some new countries that would be Israel and Jordan, Egypt, and, and some countries in the Middle East and the Mediterranean area in order nice. to, to complete that, to make it. And how long is each episode? The episodes, we typically aim to hit about five minutes. Oh, wow. Just five, like five minute episodes? How long? I mean, like, so when you're airing them, let's say you put them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Is it the same? How, like, how long? Yeah, they're five minutes there. Like, for example, on 3ABN, we have them on there, but we've put like five episodes together gotcha. to make it into a, you know, a half, half, an half an hour production. Gotcha. But each episode individually is about five minutes or so um, okay. long. So it's, it's bite-sized pieces, bite-sized content, very d digestible. Um, I guess the catchphrase would be it's short and shareable. Yes, yeah. yes, for the digital evangelism. What are some of your needs? Well, we're hoping, I mean, in, in order to film season three, we have to, uh, I guess, raise the funds to film season three. We, you know, it's, it's, it's a dream, it's a vision at the minute, but we need to kind of raise the funds to, mm -hmm. to, to go and film that and create these resources to, be, you know, be used by, the, by people out there. So we have to raise the logistical cost for that. At okay. the minute, everyone on the team is voluntary. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we both have other jobs, so this is kind of something we're doing, I guess you say, on the side. And all the other team members, they're, they're volunteering their time. They have full-time jobs and they volunteer their time. So at the minute, it's voluntary, so we need to kind of raise the funds to kind of just the logistical expenses of, of filming and, and, and getting around and, getting, and doing stuff. And, okay. yeah. and so let's recap what's all involved with the project. So people, I mean, because, you, you know, oftentimes you see a finished project, project, but you don't know everything that mm -hmm. goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go over that. I mean, in terms of the videos, it's, you know, the, the writing of the scripts, it's researching the locations, it's traveling to the locations and filming, mm -hmm. and, and all of that that involves photography, video, drones, etc. And then it's on the back end when, when Clive has to do the editing and putting the, the post-production together. Mm -hmm. And it's the producing of the study guide that goes along with it. So it yeah. becomes quite a... Yeah. And there's dreams to do a few other things as well, like audio series, longer documentaries on each reformer. Nice. Um, there's other things in the pipeline that we're kind of thinking about, but obviously all these things take resources. You know? Yeah. And um, so we're kind of just dreaming, but you know, we dreamed for season one and we dreamed for season two, and we're at the stage two and a half years later now where we're dreaming about season three. Yeah. So um, 
you know, we know God can provide for us. Yeah, and he's, he continues to do so. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any, like, movies in your, in your future? Are you thinking about we have We have uh, one already um, on Martin Luther. It was kind of done that we released on the day of the Reformation. We partnered with um, ARTV, Adventist Radio oh, nice. TV. Uh -huh. um, and it's called 95, um, and it's kind of just just on Martin Luther. Okay. Um, it's uh, about 45, 50 minutes long, just on Martin Luther. So the aim really is to do like longer stuff. Yeah. Uh, so like a, a, a whole ep a whole one hour segment on John Wycliffe or John Wesley, you know, because we're kind of touching the, the edges of all these yeah. reformers. Yeah. There's so much more information. What were they like? You know, did they have kids? Mm -hmm. How was it like standing up to the Catholic Church as Martin Luther who had a family, you know, those kind of things. Um, so we kind of want to delve a little bit deeper. Nice, mm. nice. So kind of really ex exploring their background and who they were as an individual in addition to what they contributed. Uh, yeah. Nice. Um, so, all right, so we've got the movie thing, we've mm -hmm. got bite-sized content, shareable content, um, study guides. I think the study guides is an awesome idea. Yeah, we're looking at releasing those in hard copy, but also because of the younger generation that we, we not solely appealing to, but obviously is a large audience. We're also going to release those on, on Apple as iBooks. Okay. So they're interactive. They have nice. illustrations. They have interactive maps and all that kind of stuff. We already have a few prototypes that we're kind of working on behind the scenes. Nice, nice. Well, I can't believe our time is, is yeah. almost up. Um, we definitely want people to know how they can contact you, how they can support you, and all of those things. So we're going to go to uh, an address roll and a news break, and we'll be right back. The Lineage Journey is designed to help you understand your spiritual heritage and explore the links between the past, present, and future. Visit lineagejourney.com where you'll find both Season 1 on the Reformation and Season 2. The journey continues, featuring the history and pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Donate online at lineagejourney.com or contact them by email at info at lineagejourney.com. Check them out on social media or subscribe to their Twitter feed at Lineage Journey. Well, our time has escaped us. You know, for those people that may be wondering, can they get the Lineage series on DVD? What other platforms uh, is it available Good question. on? Yeah, we're not just on social media mm -hmm. in terms of YouTube or our website. We're also on Roku. Okay. So if you have a Roku box at home, you can watch it. If Download the app. Yeah. So Download the Roku app. Yeah. Then if you have Apple TV, we're on Apple TV as well. Okay. And then also we have DVDs as well. Okay. Of season one, people can order the DVDs through our website if they, you know, if they want to get a hard copy okay. of the resource. Because some churches may not have Wi-Fi, or maybe some relatives don't. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they can have the DVD and watch it that way. Mm -hmm. Now you said download the Roku app, though. But what is what is the app on Roku? So it's called Lineage Journey. So just okay. type in Lineage, Lineage Journey, Journey, and you'll okay. find it on the Apple TV and the Roku. You'll be able to download those apps and okay. get all our videos and all our content available there. Now, did you guys have all of the answers when you were starting the Lineage Journey, or Definitely not. I mean, it was, a, it was a project that really took a lot of faith. Um, mm -hmm. For anyone watching out there, I'd really say, you know, those who have faith in little are faithful in much. You know, Luke 16, 10, that's kind of been the verse that has carried me through this. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that sometimes you just have to go out and do stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, let the Lord deal with the rest. And this, this took tremendous sacrifice from everybody in the team. Um, but we're at a stage now where the Lord has helped us to grow. And, you know, if, if you're struggling with what to do, if you're struggling of, 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 um, how you can utilize your gifts, mm -hmm. um, just start somewhere. Just start being faithful in the smallest things and God will multiply it. And before you know it, you'll have a ministry that will be able to impact people. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank both of you guys for, you know, the work that you've done. I know that going out and recording all of this and mm -hmm. traveling, all the travel on top of your job can't be easy. So I want to thank you for, for joining us. You and, have good wives. We're thankful us. for them. Yeah, yeah they, for they seem to be very <laughs> supportive of you guys <laughs> and what you're doing. And that's, that's awesome. So thank you again. And thank you for joining us. Our time has just escaped us, but we hope that you'll tune in next time. Until then, God bless. <laughs>